Welcome to SHOT Show TV, I'm David Lombardo. We are with Chris Chang, who is going to talk to us about NFTs. And I will be the first person to admit, this is totally beyond my ken. So we're all going to learn this together. Chris, this is a collectible, isn't it? Is that what we're, we're looking at? This new NFT technology. And give the name, what, what is NFT? Yeah, so NFT is this acronym, and it stands for non-fungible token. But for the purposes of this conversation, don't worry about what it stands for. Okay. When you hear NFT, those letters, just think digital collectible. It's a new way of digital ownership in this, obviously, this, this continual digital world, right? That everything's going digital. It's been the trend, right, over the past 20, 30 years. And NFT technology is this next step to further digitizing our lifestyles and also digitizing what we own. So would this be the modern equivalent of collecting art or challenge coins or anything that you would hopefully buy for a price and then it would increase in value? Yeah, that's, that's definitely the general concept, right? That NFTs are really digital files. They can be a picture, a video, a music file. It can be like a, cha a digital version of a challenge coin. Okay. A digital version of a patch, right? We get obviously all these Velcro patches you know, here at SHOT Show and other, other events, but NFTs are essentially digitizing pretty much everything that exists in the real world, bringing them into the digital space. And this new NFT technology is what allows us to do one of, I think, two primary things, right? The first one is establish authenticity. Right, to, and this is to say, if an entity is going to create an NFT, that people want to know that it's coming from the authentic either content creator or sure. the license holder, right? We, we all pay for authenticity, right? You don't want to pay yeah. for a fake or an unauthorized yeah, sure. copy of a thing. You want the authentic, real thing. So this NFT technology allows us to understand if I'm buying a digital file from someone that I know it's coming from the actual licensee or content creator. Right, it's not like somebody who fakes a paint, famous painting and passes it off. Exactly, so you have all these artists who are creating digital art. And when I say art, I mean art in the loosest sense of the word. Okay. Right, it, it could be a, a, a picture that someone's taken with their camera Maybe they've manipulated the picture, or maybe they haven't. Could be a video file, right? A, an engaging video that people want to buy because it's art, or sure. it's something that's interesting to them in some format. So you have artists and content creators who are making NFTs, and what the whole goal here is, it's a new way for brands companies and organizations to connect with users. Now, can you only see these things on a computer? Yes, yeah, so this NFTs live in the digital space. There's the, the authentic real copies of the NFT files only live online. It's really esoteric collecting then. I will be the first to admit that this whole <laughs> NFT concept is wild. And you know, I, I'm a technologist. I started my career at Google in 2007. And 15 months ago, when I started paying attention to NFTs, I was really confused. I didn't understand what, this, what NFTs were, why anybody would want to do this. But after three months of studying this new technology, I went from skeptic to convert. Now let me give a very concrete example of, of a wild success that I think the firearms industry, we need to look at and, and replicate it essentially. So the NBA, right, Basketball Association, they have created this platform, this website called nbatopshot.com. Okay. They're selling NFTs of video clips, 15 second video clips of all their players as they're hitting game-winning three-pointers and slam okay. dunks, right? all these amazing moments in NBA games. And they're creating 
tens of thousands of copies of these videos and selling them for anywhere from $4 to $20. And then users are able, owners are then able to resell them. And some of these okay. most popular NBA players, right, in these, these top moments, they're being resold for as high as $400,000, you know, $500,000 for one digital copy of that video as an NFT. Is there some sort of marketplace for this? Is there a, yeah. a location, something? Exactly, right. So there are multiple NFT marketplaces that exist. The NBA is, is the one if you are a basketball fan. All the other major, major sporting leagues are following suit. Major League Baseball, the NFL, Major League Soccer, the UFC. Everyone is, is, is seeing the utility for collectors. Now again, NFTs are not for everyone. Let's be very clear. The utility is if you like collecting or also if you like speculating on investments because NFTs can increase in value. And like any collector, we're all buying NFTs. Sometimes it's just for the fun of it. Sure. Right? So how do they, how do people, it's a speculative thing. So if people are interested in investing in speculative things and this appeals to them, where do they go? Yeah, so you know, NBA Top Shot is a, a, a great website for basketball fans. And again, all the major sporting leagues are coming out with their own websites. One of the big ones that's not hobby focused, it's called Open Sea, like the water, the ocean. Okay. And this is kind of like the Etsy for NFT creators where anybody can take a digital file and upload it to Open Sea and create their own NFTs. And then you right, market your NFT marketplace and you're right, trying to write, and you're telling a story. Right, around why are these digital collectibles or these digital items that I've created worth anything? So you're probably going to get a phone call from me. I'm a go, I'll go home tonight and I'm going to try and figure this out. I'll have questions. Uh, but I appreciate it. It's a very complicated subject. Uh, I'm still not sure I get wrapped my brain around it, but I... But it's interesting, and I really appreciate you taking the time to come on. And, and yeah, absolutely. And I mean, so I, I think to give a concrete example, in the firearms space where this has been, NFTs have taken hold. So last year, I was on the cover of Recoil Magazine, and I'm on the cover with a, a shirt that has a distressed American flag in LGBT rainbow colors, and the whole cover art was about the Second Amendment is for all. So hashtag two way for all. Hmm. It was a very controversial cover art. There was a lot of conversation, but I saw an opportunity. I'm like, hey, like, let's try and sell this cover art as an NFT. So we created 10 digital copies of the cover art and I marketed it and, and sold the notion that if, the, if you bought one of these 10 rare NFTs, that you support this notion, right, that the Second Amendment is for all. Sure, sure. Now, the results of this NFT auction were phenomenal. I generated $31,000 in yeah, revenue from selling these 10 NFTs of this Recoil Magazine cover art. So the takeaways are this. It's a new way for advocacy, right? I was advocating for the Second Amendment. The 10 winners who, who paid money, real dollars, to own a digital file, I mean, they're also a part of history now sure. at this point. Yeah. But now on the, on the customer relation piece, right? these 10 winners, I now have a direct customer relationship with each of these 10 owners. The person who bid on serial number one of 10 of this Recoil Magazine cover art he paid $10,000, right, for serial number one. Serial number 10, I think the final bid was like $750. So just to give a very concrete example of how this NFT technology has a lot of potential for our industry, for our culture, and for our community. Chris, we gotta go, uh, but I appreciate you coming on and explaining it. I'm sure it'll give a lot of people some food for thought. 
Indeed. Thanks for having me. Appreciate, Appreciate the time. It. Thank you very much. And for SHOT Show TV, I'm David Lombardo.